On and off over several years, I developed an engine control unit prototype for an old Onan generator that I ran using wood gas for fuel. This special ECU was needed because I needed a way to have wide spark advance control in order to optimize the power output of the engine unit. On my way to getting there, I learned many lessons and built several electronic, usually Arduino-based circuits to help me develop the final working device. Today's video will showcase the completed coil-on-plug simulator that solved all the problems that I had encountered over the way. In addition to the simulator itself, <clears throat> during my journey I needed a way to solve elusive timing problems, so I bought and used to good advantage an inexpensive logic analyzer, which is this little thing right here. So, in this video, I will first walk you through the simulator itself, explaining the component functions, along with some background of why the functions were needed. And then secondly, I will briefly demonstrate some of the features of the cheap logic analyzer that I used. This whole, uh, uh, this whole ignition simulator thing started a number of years ago, when I bought a Chinese uh, wood gasifier system and hooked it up to an old Onan two-cylinder generator uh, and doing data logging with my very first ever Arduino project uh, 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 Mega 2560 with about uh, over a dozen sensors of various kind temperature, pressure, uh, throttle position, I don't know, a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, that's where it all started and then I realized that I would need wider advanced spark advanced control on the Onan generator if I was going to optimize the power that I could get out of the wood chips that I was burning at the time. Here is the complete Onan generator system with my ECU setup. The black blob in the right center is the two tower CNP or coil near plug coil that listens to an Arduino to get spark length and timing information. I added some switching so I could move from the Onan's original points ignition to my ECU as needed during testing. I know this doesn't look like much, but if you see the Arduino sort of in the center of the picture there, that's really the uh, ECU simulator that I eventually got running uh, that did give me the advance that I needed and control and watched a few other numbers. The, uh, there are two Hall effect sensors on a bracket there that reads this wheel that we have or will talk about a lot more with magnets in it. First I had an Onan generator running on wood gas and I realized that to optimize the output from the wood gas I had to have a lot more ignition advance than the engine would provide. So I decided that I could use a coil on plug driver somehow to control that advance. So then I needed to get a used uh, coil on plug coil assembly which I did, then figure out how the coil on plug process works, then to figure out how to wire up a simulator to actually fire it. Then I made a basic setup to fire a spark plug. Then I made a simple rotating two-pole rotor tester with Hall effects and magnets to be driven by a small Arduino controlled DC motor to send uh, simulated engine timing pulses to uh, the, uh, from Hall effect sensors to the system. Okay, well, as you can see, there's quite a few steps to all this, so here we are with step eight. Next, I had to write Arduino code to a second Arduino Uno to send the actual coil pulses to the coil on plug coil and make the thing actually fire the COP coil under varying rotor speeds. Then I realized that I needed to understand coil charge time. So then I built a test setup to evaluate coil saturation time for any automotive spark coil. Number 10, I made a new rotor. 
This time it's a circular degree wheel to replace that two pole rotor with this degree wheel which has four magnets, three 90 degrees apart with the south sides of the magnet facing up and one with the north side facing up to enhance the sensitivity of knowing where the engine's crankshaft is at any given time. Then I had to code that up so it works. Finally, ready. I was finally ready to add code to control the spark advance. So I added code and a pot to that second UNO to vary the spark timing. Number 12, I spent a lot of time debugging the code and the simulator hardware to get it to do what it needed to do. And then finally, here my step 13. Apply all that knowledge to the breadboard prototype and test it out on the actual Onan two-cylinder 6.5 kilowatt generator set. Lots more testing once I got it out there on the machine. So that caused several trips back and forth with the simulator to work out the logic. To simulate an engine's crankshaft, I made this aluminum degree wheel that has four tiny neodymium magnets embedded at 90 degrees apart. One magnet has its north side up and the other three have their south sides up. The north up magnet sits at the zero degree location on the wheel. South magnets are 90 degrees apart. This degree wheel sits on the shaft of a small electric motor. On the bracket just above the wheel, there is a tiny circuit board holding two Hall effect sensors and a few other components. One Hall effect sensor has its north sensing side facing the degree wheel and the other one has its south side fence facing the degree wheel. Back here there's a white LED that fires when spark is produced and I have mounted a USB microscope here so I can watch and record if needed the actual spark timing events to visually monitor advanced drift, etc. Next is the motor speed controller. I made this simple motor controller a couple of years earlier before I started this whole project just to see how H-bridge ICs work. As you can see there's a pot on the board that adjusts the PWM output of the chip through an Arduino Uno. In the original circuit a much smaller motor was used and it was powered by a 9 volt battery but the much larger degree wheel motor needs more juice so it gets powered from a small 12 volt lead acid battery under the coil unplug assembly. Here's the coil unplug assembly with its 12 volt battery. Here at the upper left of my ignition simulator sits a coil unplug assembly from a Honda automobile. Under it there's a small 12 volt lead acid battery to power it. It receives coil charge signals from my spark control assembly, which is here. The metal plate is here to protect the more sensitive circuitry from the electrical noise when the sparks occur at the spark plug. Between the 12 volt battery and the coil's power pin, there's a low value resistor which you can't see. It's just a piece of nichrome wire from a clothes dryer and I can see the voltage drop across it on my oscilloscope which is up there uh, to get an indication of coil saturation time. Arduino spark controller or ECU potentiometers and LCD display. Here's the heart of the system. This Robo Red, an Arduino Uno knockoff, holds all the code to convert timing signals from the Hall effect sensors into properly timed signals. There are three pots attached to this board. One, two, three. But only one is in use in the final simulator. One pot was for adjusting coil charge time or coil saturation time. But once I determined the correct charge time for this particular COP assembly, I simply coded in a fixed number. I think six milliseconds. One pot was for adjusting coil charge time or coil saturation time. But once I determined the correct coil charge time for this particular COP assembly, I simply coded in a fixed number. For this Honda COP assembly, it turned out to be 6 milliseconds. Both of the other two pots are for spark advance control, but one of them was a real cheapy and was scratchy, so I added a different one that worked well and is still in the circuit, although it's unused. I have a red LED 
on the little breadboard here that flashes when sparks occur. At some point, I saw that the Arduino loop was so long because of the time it took to update the IC2 LCD that it affected the timing. So I added a push button to request a read whenever needed, but I think I solved that problem somewhere along the line. The LCD reads RPM, total number of Hall effect sensor hits to the south magnets, advanced degrees as set by the advanced pot, a term I call delta, which is simply loop time in microsecond. And finally, here's the little Salee knockoff logic analyzer. I think I paid eight dollars for this. So here's just another view of my uh, ignition simulator and here the rotor's running so we can see that if I turn my advance pot I can change the advance all the way from what did it say 60 degrees down to probably zero okay and I don't remember why I'm counting loop microseconds but it was just part of the part of the whole development thing all right again I've had a, a number of different pieces of software in here over the years and uh, here's the coil and plug assembly and if I turn the voltage on there we can see sparks being made I can change the uh, the RPMs. Over kind of wide range, well, that stuff can, continues to happen. Of course, the rotor can go faster and slower. So I guess that's uh, that's the story for that part of the machine. Here's the opening screen of the Salee knockoff logic analyzer after I set it up for my needs on my ignition simulator. First I'll use the simulation software to show a sample of my run data, then we'll take a look at some of the neat ways we can analyze the data. If you pause the video, you can see that I have channel 1 set up for the south magnets, channel 2 for the north magnet, channel 3 for the spark trigger pin, channel 4 speed PWM output, channel 5 is I think simply grounded, channel 6 is timer 1 ISR, and channel 0 and 7 are unused. Other than that, you can simply watch me drag data, watch pulse length and value info, click option buttons, etc. I think this was the best eight dollars or so that I ever spent on a piece of test equipment. If you Google say Leah logic analyzer you can find lots of info about it and they are still for sale pretty cheap on eBay and other places.